GitHub is a weird platform that Linus Torvalds, for a number of good reasons, doesn't particularly like. Now, it's no issue to use it as just any old server to host your code. The Linux kernel does exactly that with one of its mirrors. But when it comes to the actual tooling on GitHub, it can create some kind of weird situations. And this is a perfect example of that. Linus Torvalds and the mainline kernel development never ever merges code through the GitHub interface. That merge button on GitHub is never ever pressed. GitHub can be used as a source for your patches to send up to the Linux kernel mailing list, and there are a bunch of people that do that, but GitHub is just treated as any other server that hosts your code. But if they never merge through GitHub, how do things like this happen? Merged, this, merged, this, merged, this, merged, and the one I showed before, this one, also merged. And to make it even clearer, it even says it was merged by Torvalds, and this is his actual account. This isn't some like impersonation account. This is the actual account he has on GitHub. But Linus doesn't press the merge button. This was not merged on GitHub. Now I'm sure that some of these users are operating completely in good faith. For example, this person here who made a pull request on GitHub and also sent the patches up to the Linux kernel mailing list. But others here are likely exploiting a very amusing issue with how GitHub handles what it means for a pull request to be merged. But even if you are operating in good faith, the way that this happens is exactly the same. Okay, let's talk about how this happens because this is definitely not the first time and definitely won't be the last time that something like this happens again. The first thing you need to understand is a GitHub pull request does not actually exist in GIMP. A GitHub pull request is a concept entirely existent on GitHub itself and whatever databases they manage. Now, Git does have a concept known as the request pool. This is something that you can use, and this is something that Linus had wanted the pull request system to be based off of. To my understanding, it's like partially inspired by it, but what GitHub does with a pull request does not interact with a Git request pool. And honestly, it's fairly likely that you probably haven't interacted with it either. Now, the point I'm trying to make here is when you open a pull request, when you close a pull request, when you do anything with a GitHub pull request, nothing special is happening with the underlying Git repo. Obviously, if you merge the code through GitHub, through a pull request, the code is going to get merged into the repo. But merging it through that way to Git looks exactly the same as just doing a regular Git merge. Git has absolutely no idea what a GitHub pull request is. All it sees is Git commands are being run. However, in the other direction, there are ways to make Git interact with GitHub. I talked about this in a prior video on curl, but there are keywords like fixes and closes. If you include these alongside an ID, you can then make Git close a pull request or close an issue or fix an issue. But there isn't a keyword for mergers. When these mergers are being done, this isn't something that is being done from the Git side. This is being done by GitHub implicitly based on other information. What's that information you might ask? Commit hashes. If you use Git for more than probably three minutes, you're probably going to be aware that every single commit you make is given a mostly unique identifier. Just considering how big the address space is, it's probably going to be unique. This is done to ensure that even if two identical commits are made at different points in a project's history, those can still be addressed individually. All of this nicely fits together when you're using GitHub as your development platform. You make some code changes locally. You then make a pull request on GitHub. You discuss the changes and then merge it on GitHub. 
but when GitHub is just being used as a mirror and merges are being done outside of GitHub, things can get a bit weird, like in the case of the Linux kernel. Let's imagine a scenario for a second. So when you want to send patches to the Linux kernel, you do so through the Linux kernel mailing list. So let's say that's exactly what you go and do. Now, before they get merged by Linus Torvalds through Git, you go and make a pull request on the Linux kernel GitHub, and you attach the exact same series of patches that you also sent to the Linux kernel mailing list. Nobody is going to merge the pull request on GitHub, so for now, it's just going to sit open and basically just do nothing. Maybe you'll get some comments on there or some bot messages, but it's not going to be merged. Later on, though, those patches that you sent to the Linux kernel mailing list get merged by Linus into the mainline Git tree, and then the mirror on GitHub is updated to include those patches you sent. So now you have a situation where you have a set of patches that are merged into the kernel, but you have the exact same set of patches with the exact same set of commit hashes that are sitting here in an open pull request. And this set of events is exactly the situation that causes this right here to happen. You have an open pull request with the exact set of patches that were just merged into the project. So what should GitHub be doing with this open pull request? Should it just go and do nothing with it? Leave it there and let a developer clean it up? That might work. That's probably the easiest thing to do. Should they go and mark it as closed? Well, closed doesn't really make sense because it hasn't been closed. That code is merged into the project, so that's probably not the best thing to do either. The absolute best possible thing they could do is what Forge Joe and Giddy does, which is have a manually merged button where you can indicate that this was merged outside of the tool we are currently on, and that completely resolves the issue. But what GitHub decides is to use the merged indicator it uses for something merged on GitHub. Now, this is not an issue if you are acting in good faith. Like we had this person here. This is the person who authored the commits, who then also made a pull request, and also sent them to the Linux kernel mailing list. The pull request they made on GitHub got marked as merged. However, this is where things get a little bit interesting. Commit hashes don't change when you clone a repo. Okay, so what if, for example, you uploaded a copy of the repo to GitHub with the patches that you want to merge, and then you open a pull request using your clone of the repo with the patches that you didn't author, but still have the exact same commit hashes as the ones that just got merged into the kernel. Well, you can do this, where you can make a pull request where you were not involved in developing the code whatsoever. If you go to the commits and you look at who actually made it, this is a different person. It was committed by a different person. But GitHub does not care about who the author of the code is. All they care about is, are the commit hashes the exact same commit hashes? If they are, if those commit hashes exist in the repo, Mark it as merged. Basically, if you keep an eye on the Linux kernel mailing list and you know that a series of patches is about to be merged into the kernel, you can then squat on those patches in a pull request on the Linux kernel GitHub and make it look like you were the person who made those patches and you were the person who got them merged. Is this a harmful thing to do? Not really. Everybody knows the Linux kernel GitHub, or at least they should. Apparently, there's some people that don't hear. The Linux kernel GitHub is not how development of the kernel is done. Nobody involved in the kernel actually cares about the GitHub outside of it being a backup in case they lose all of their other backups. What happens on the kernel GitHub 
doesn't really matter. If you go through and look at a lot of the poor requests, most of them are complete nonsense, just trying to destroy the repo, and nothing is really ever done with them because it doesn't really matter. Now, don't go and do this on a project where the developers actually try to use the GitHub tooling and sometimes will merge things outside of GitHub. That's annoying, and you're probably going to get yourself banned from a project like that. But when it's something like Linux, this doesn't really hurt anyone. It's just a fun little side thing that people realize the GitHub interface lets you do. Now, I absolutely cannot take credit for realizing you can do this. This video is primarily based on a comment in a Mastodon thread left by Hector Martin, who you may know from the Asahi Linux project, stuff they've done back in the homebrew Wii days, and a ton of other things they've had their name attached to. Now, the point of this video is to say that just because something is happening within the GitHub history, that doesn't necessarily mean it's actually happening on Git. GitHub is just a kind of fancy, in many ways wonky interface for interacting with Git itself. And sometimes the choices they make lead to things that were never really expected to be possible, to be very, very easy to exploit. But what do you think? Were you aware of this problem before? Have you ever seen it happen? Or maybe you were one of the people that have done this on the Linux kernel GitHub. I would love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scribes, Libera Pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and... Don't be stupid.